What is up everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build an email account verification system. I'm going to show you in a really detailed way so you can use it in your future projects. Now, if you're not aware on my channel, we're actually building a full stack application with Next.js and GraphQL. And we've actually gone to the point where we're going to implement this in the next part of our series. However, I thought it would be appropriate to explain the entire system before jumping in and just writing all the code. So if you're interested in following along with that, make sure to stay tuned. So the purpose of this entire system is to make sure that we're not getting fake users or just bots on our platform. We want to make sure that our users are real and that the email that they give us is a real email. So we want to verify it. We don't want to fill our database with a bunch of fake data. And we also don't want to introduce potential attackers into our platform. So here our entire system starts with a client. So they're going to be sending a create account mutation if you're using GraphQL or just a request. And that mutation holds input. This will be their email, username, and password that they chose. Now, this request goes from the client over to the server where it starts getting handled. So here you can check for, is it a strong enough password? Is the username long enough? Things like that. Did they give a real email? Things of that manner. And if it's not a valid input, you can respond with an error message where it returns to the client and they can just try again. Now, let's say that the input was valid. Let's go over here. And now the next thing we need to check is, is there already an existing account with the same email or username? Now, this is very important, the or, because this makes a big difference. Do you want your users to make multiple accounts with the same email? Or do you want to tie them to only one account per email? Here, you can decide that. So if you decide that only one account per email, you can check if the email is already registered. If not, you can just check for the username only. So if an account already exists with an email or username that they provided, we just return with an error as we did before. Now, if there is an account that exists that matches our that criteria, we can come down and this is where the real juice or the meat and potatoes of this entire uh, design is at. So we would hash their password and create a unique ID. We would get that unique ID and we would store it in Redis as a key with the value being their hashed password, their username and their email. We would set their credentials to expire. So we don't want to um, we don't want to cache their credentials forever. We just want to cache it for a specific amount of time. So if they never verify their account, we just want to delete it from our system and we don't want to know about it ever again. After we do all that, we send them an email which contains a URL and that URL has a query parameter which contains that unique ID which is tied to their credentials that, that were cached. Here you can do some rate limiting to make sure that people don't sign up for accounts like spamming you and stay tuned for this because we're going to implement all this in my next video in the series that we're doing on my channel. So after you do this, this is basically the, the most important part I'd say. The server responds with a message on the front end, basically telling the user, hey, check your account. We sent you an email. So now we're back on the client and let's say the client sees our message and says, OK, let me go to my email and let me uh, do what they said. So they go to their email address and they click on the link that we gave them. The link basically is to a path on our server and has a query parameter set to their unique ID. So when they click on that link, the browser sends a get, get request to the, the path that we specified. And of course, it sends the unique ID through. So now our server handles that request. And first of all, we need to check, does the URL contain an ID parameter? This might seem redundant at first glance, but remember, a user can type in any URL into their browser and we can't stop them from doing that, but we can't stop them from basically trying to um, crash our system and we can check for edge cases. So we want to check, do they actually have an ID um, in their in the URL? If they don't, we redirect them to the login page. If they do, we also want to query Redis with that ID. And we want to basically see, did we get a result from our query? Is there a user that we cached with that ID? 
If there's not, you would just redirect them to the login page and not do anything with their information, basically. Now, if there is an account that was cached with that ID, this is where we create their account. We basically send over their credentials to a database, which creates their account. Then we clear the account from Redis, the cache. And now we're basically done and the user can log in. So we created their account. It's in the database. Everything was verified. The purpose was fulfilled, which was to verify their email that it's actually real and it's actually their email. So now we can just go back boop, 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 and redirect them to the login page. And now the user can sign in and use our application. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It might have seemed like a lot, but it's really not. Um, stay tuned because in my next video, we're going to implement all of this in TypeScript on our Next.js GraphQL server. So stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.